hello and welcome back and it's time for another best of today i want to talk about the best eight bay to buy right now at the end of 2020 and of course at the start of 2021 there have been a lot of nas devices from all the big brands this year and let's face it, when it comes to an 8-bay, that is when things start getting serious. It's largely where a brand that's developing a lot of hardware solutions, like the ones on the table. These are for another video coming up soon. Um, these, these brands look at the 8-bay as kind of the entry point for enterprise. Up to that point, you do see a lot of the lower grade hardware being utilised. And... Before the 8-bay, you do kind of see a little whiff of compromise at times. But in terms of 8-bay, that's when things really, really do change. Because an 8-bay is where businesses get on board. An 8-bay um, desktop device, not rack mount, will make all the difference. Because with that, you generally always get expandability. You generally always get a decent CPU and memory combination, and you almost always get a decent amount of upgradability. 8 bays gives a lot of space to play with, and generally a lot of PSU and overall power to boot. And generally you also find is that warranty and service options do improve at the 8 bay level as well. Consequently, when you're buying an 8 bay solution, even as your first step into the world of NAS for a business that's been heavily reliant on cloud, or as a home or prosumer user that want to upgrade their overall network attached storage or internal server setup to something a bit more beefy, an 8 bay is somewhere where it can be make or break. And this year has been no different. We've not seen lots of 8 bays. We've actually seen less 8 bays than any other form factor, and I'm including rack mounts as well this year. 8 bays normally you see a lot more traffic on these systems, but now towards the end of 2020, we are starting to see a few 8 bay solutions pop out there, but a little too late for what I would like to think of as an optimal choice for the year. So before we go any further, let's talk about my favorite 8 bays, but moreover, Let's talk about how I selected them, because even though there's not been many 8 bays, there's been enough to warrant our choices. So first and foremost, for any NAS to qualify for consideration in these this 8 bay list, it's worth mentioning that they had to have been released before October 31st, 2020. They don't need necessarily have to have been released this year. As mentioned, there's not been a vast number of 8 bays, but it had to have been released prior to that date. So both stock availability and the ability to purchase for most buyers has been readily available. Next, they need to have at least two years of manufacturer's warranty, ideally three years if I'm honest, because you want to make sure, particularly as a small, medium or even large business user, that you have got a good amount of branded support if something goes wrong down the line. Also, all of the eight bays in today's video definitely, definitely, definitely need to support the entirety of the applications catalog from their respective brands. I am not going to look at 8 base solutions that are a little bit budget that don't give you everything the brand is promising because I think 8 bays is enough to guarantee that you are getting a decent enough solution. And that goes for expandability as well. These solutions need not only to be fully RAID supported as an 8-bay, but they also need to be expandable because businesses require expandability. So any 8-bay that can't have more drives added on later on, we are not including it in this list because it is important enough as a feature of an 8-bay solution that it's I think is warranted and crucial. Also, we are only looking at desktop solutions because although we are moving into a largely business area, I still don't think we can include 8-bay rack mounts into this list because rack mounts are a totally different beast with a totally different end user. And I think anyone that's looking at an 8-bay desktop is not in the, gonna be in the mood to switch to a rack mount. There's too much palaver, too much setup. They're just different beasts. And finally, much like the integrity towards the brand, providing all of their software catalog and support for these devices, I am only looking at rack mount solutions, oh, sorry, uh, desktop 8-bay solutions, I should say, sorry about that, that factor in an x86 64-bit processor. The reason being that these CPUs are the ones that get the job done. And although there are some great stuff coming out of Marvel, Annapurna, and Realtek in their ARM 64-bit CPUs, and we're even starting to see some VM companies out there and VM supplier and support companies migrate over to ARM 64-bit processors. I still don't think we're there yet, and I am only looking at 64-bit x86 chips from the likes of AMD and Intel. So your Xeons, your Pentiums, your Intel cores, your Ryzen's, and more. Some powerhouse CPUs indeed. But before we get to the three picks from me, 
Let's talk about the one that almost made it. Let's talk about the 8 bay that got so close to the sun like Icarus but didn't quite make the cut. That is the TVS 1282T3. This behemoth of an 8 bay is one that we have talked about here on the channel, on the blog, on the other channel at span.com a lot. This 8 bay, which is 8 bays of hard drive storage, 4 bays of SATA SSD storage and two M2 SATA bays of storage is an absolute beast with 10 GBE Thunderbolt 3 and a huge amount of tiered storage open to it. But the reason it didn't qualify for this list is because it is a beast. And I think in terms of 8 bay, as solid as it is, I th fear it nears the end of its product life. And in most cases, you can't actually purchase the non-Thunderbolt version anymore. You can only get the one that's got Thunderbolt and 10 GB as standard, which means the price is starting at about £3,000 off the bat. And if you're looking at Thunderbolt solutions and looking at 10 GBE solutions, there's an element of flexibility that doesn't make you be forced into buying this over £3,000 8 bay. And a lot of people with that kind of money to spend, you know, five grand if you fully populate it, are going to look at uh, rack mounts and i think although the 1282 t3 is great for video editing great for 4k plex media server and great for a whole number of things i think as an 8 bay compared against other 8 bays i think there are better things out there right now like the three i'm going to talk about so on to my first choice my first choice of 8 bay for the best 8 bays of the year to buy right now up until about april 2021 and then you might want to review things is a synology it's the synology ds18 one nine plus now a number of you i am sure are going to call me on the fact straight away that this is an intel atom cpu it is an intel it is a 64-bit x86 but it is a somewhat underwhelming cpu in modern senses this intel atom c35 uh, 38 has been on the synology lineup for quite a while it's only recently been revised in devices like the ds1621 plus but this 8 bay brings expandability this 8 bay brings four LAN ports, one GBE arguably. It also brings PCIe upgradability on the rear, expandability with a further 10 bays. SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, it's one of the largest devices out there that supports SHR, not the largest, DS2419 does. And it brings BTRFS and the whole gamut of applications from Synology it is a very, very solid solution. And the reason it made this cut of eight bays is despite that uh, fractionally modest CPU, it does arrive with ECC memory inside DDR4 and the added ability that this system is far more affordable than a lot of other 8 bays once you factor in the Synology software, which is fantastic with three years of warranty that can be expanded to five years. It is a very compact and very complete solution. Although I will add with the caveat that perhaps next year when this 900 to 950 quid NAS uh, is still around, I'm willing to bet there will be a follow up to it. That 8 bay. I think it's about time and don't be surprised if you see a DS1821 plus in the near future. So always stay tuned and double check for that model ID before you take the plunge on the DS1819 because this is a solid NAS, but it could stand for some of the improvements seen in the 18, uh, the 1621 plus released earlier in 2020. So my second place now is nice and simple. It is a QNAP. It is, and I don't know why I'm going to point at the graphic on screen just now, because it's the TSH886, a ZFS NAS, when I could simply point at this. This is the NAS here that I'm using for testing. This is the QNAP TSH886, should be either side of the screen somehow. Now, this NAS for me is one that in 2020 really blew me away. A number of you may argue this isn't technically an 8 bay, seeing as it's 6 bays of SATA storage here, and a couple of SATA storage bays here for SSDs, and inside there is some NVMe M2 SSD cache uh, ports, which are PCIe Gen 3x4 each, but those bays for NVMe can also be used for raw storage too. And this system arrives with two PCIe Gen 3 x 8 upgrade slots. And it has that Xeon CPU, I believe the 1622 quad-core. It is a beast of a system. 
And let's not overlook the simple fact that it arrives with ZFS as its file system. QUTS Hero with all of the data coalescing, all of the inline data du uh, deduplication, compression, all of that improved caching that arrives from ZFS, all of the triple parity and QNAP uh, RAIDs all put together with RAID Z and traditional RAID levels all supported on it. And that removal of a tier between storage pool, volume and apps that is all part of ZFS to keep things nice and quick, simple and reliable and still maintain great performance really do push it to the front of the pack and arriving Let's be honest, at an arguable £1,800, it is not the cheapest NAS, but with a three-year manufacturer's warranty inside, the entire range of QNAP applications, from multi-tier backup solutions to VMs to Ubuntu to multimedia applications, cloud migration, cloud synchronization tools in BoxSafe, virtual JBOD, and hybrid uh, mount, there is just so much inside this beast of an as and that triple tier storage system allows you to either have a three tier system where data moves onto the appropriate storage media for the best performance which is then realized externally or all three tiers accessible as SATA hard drive SATA SSD and NVMe SSD all as their own separate storage pool and then you can chuck in some 10G or take advantage of the four 2.5 GBE ports on the rear of it this has a lot going for it, and although it arguably arrives at twice the price of the DDS 1819 Plus, it does do a hell of a lot more than twice the number of things with a huge amount of storage performance and potential with ECC memory going up to, I believe, 128 gig. This is so VM ready, it hurts. It is a beast of a device, and it might be super expensive for a number of you, but you do get a lot for your money in terms of long-term stability, rigidity, and performance. So, what is my third place? Well, we are sticking with QNAP here. We are going with, you can hear me say it already, the TVS 872 XT. This NAS is still doing so, so, so well in my best of, and it's cl closing in on two years old. This large, 8-bay Thunderbolt 3 NAS is the very reason why the TVS 1282 T3 is not on this list. This 8-bay provides all of the abilities, all of the storage potential, all of the upgradability, all of the performance, like the 1282 T3 we discussed before, but a much more modest price tag, even including 10GBE and Thunderbolt straight off the bat at a price point that these other devices just don't have it. Arriving at around 1,900 quid, give or take, depending on where you shop around, the TVS 872XT has just got it all. It's got a six core i5 eighth generation processor with embedded graphics to a high degree and a huge amount of memory storage potential. Um, I believe it supports up to 64 gig of DDR4 memory right now. As mentioned, it also has a 10 gigabit ethernet port um, hardwired to the board add a, th a couple of Thunderbolt 3 ports with an available PCIe slot as well afterwards. It's hugely expandable. It also has USB 3.1 Gen, uh, 3.2 Gen 2, so you can attach 10 gigabits per second USB storage devices. It's even got HDMI out, allowing you uh, with an HDMI 2.0 at 4K at 60 frames per second, have a localized visual resource with KVM support and a huge degree of support in virtual machines and surveillance utilization and that second one is very very important because even without installing a graphics card the core components of the tvs 872 xt allow you to support not only the entire gamut of qnap applications but also a lot of the ai powered back-end stuff there as well with qvr face qvr door and lots of other qvr add-ons that use ai to identify things in real time that are being recorded for surveillance. Also that six core CPU, it's hugely supportive of third party VM applications as well as their own first party virtualization station app and therefore it is hugely sorted to businesses that want to move their entire setup from the cloud to the NAS with the added benefit as mentioned of BoxSafe, Virtual JBOD and Hybrid Mount that allow you to migrate existing cloud spaces or cloud accounts from things like G Suite and Office 365 and view that data locally without the internet. So if you're relying on cloud services for your email accounts, for your accounts, for your CRM, for all of your information and you lose the internet, 
you're relying on each of the individual systems have their own cached data, which isn't great because they're all going to be slightly different. Whereas if you synchronize the 872 XT with the cloud and the internet is cut off, it doesn't matter because the NAS is still able via the network to have all of that cached data and therefore you don't lose access to the files. The NAS just holds the files working in conjunction with the cloud and we reinitialize and implement changes that have happened in the meantime as and when they happen. And the 872 XT 8-bay with all of this and all of this hardware power expandability and, and just ultimately performance at this price tag make it still my favorite 8-bay of the year. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do visit the link in the description for the full breakdown of 8-bays that were considered and more information on why these three made the cut. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more, and I will see you next time.